In this particular section, section six, we're gonna talk about working in sprints. In this section, we're gonna take a look at specifying your sprint schedule and your team capacity. We're gonna talk about selecting items from the backlog or the sprint backlog and using forecasting to help you. Composing requirements into tasks. So now that we have our requirements or our backlog items, we need to break them down. We're gonna talk all about that. We're gonna use the burn down charts to track progress. So you see the charts that we use in TFS, much like we saw in the cumulative flow diagram, other charts, the burn down ones, that'll help you track the progress of your project. And lastly, we're gonna talk about monitoring work using the task board. Again, you've seen the task board quite a bit, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about the task board in a, in a different manner. So again, we'll, we'll talk about monitoring your work using the task board and conducting an efficient sprint retrospective. This is one that troubles a lot of teams. Either they don't do it or they don't know how to do it correctly or they start doing it and then they drop off. So it's something we really wanna focus on is retrospectives and, and how you can go about doing efficient and effective retrospectives. So for this particular video, video one, we're talking about sprint schedule and team capacity. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at defining sprints and setting dates. So how do you go about setting up your sprint? How do you go about setting the dates to the sprint, the weeks that you're gonna have, time box weeks you're gonna use for your sprints, things like that. We're gonna talk about creating a team. Now that we have some sprints in the system, now we have to create a team that's gonna work in those sprints. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about setting the capacity of that team. So now that we have the sprints and now that we have our team ready to work in those sprints, we have to define the capacity that we have to be able to do the work. So defining sprints and setting dates. Again, it's really straightforward in TFS. You go into the web portal, you have the ability to create new sprints and put new dates around them. And what's really nice is when you put in a sprint date, the rest of the sprint, so let's say we sprint one, we have a date from a Monday to a Friday. So it's a one week sprint. The next sprint that you set up will actually know that you're doing one week sprints. It's smart enough to know, oh, your last one was a one week sprint. And since all sprints are the same time box amount, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put your dates in here for a week. And then the next one, the same thing. So again, it makes it a little quicker and you don't have to think about, you know, how, how many days or what days should I pick or things like that. It's pretty good at it. Then creating a team in TFS is really straightforward. Um, we have the ability to create a team from the from the dialog. It, again, it's in TFS. Now, you have to be a little bit higher in permissions. Not everybody can just go in and create a team. So you're gonna give somebody rights to be able to create teams. And then they can add users to the system too. So again, this is someone is more of a project admin than it is anything else because, and I'm talking a TFS project admin, uh, somebody that has the ability to add new users to the system. And you, you don't want just everybody going out there and being able to add anybody to the system. So again, permissions are important there. And we can set additional permissions for those particular individuals. So we can go into this security and we can actually look at the permissions that that group or that person has, and we can dial them up or dial them back if necessary. Lastly, we're gonna talk about setting capacity. Uh, we're gonna set capacity and the activity within TFS. Again, it's pretty straightforward in a sprint. You just tell the user, you add the users, and then you uh, the, the capacity chart knows what users you have. You put in your activity that they're going to be doing, how what's their capacity per day, and number of hours they're gonna work, and even days off. So you can take into account if people have vacations or days off. So with that, let's go look at setting capacity and setting sprint dates within TFS. All right, so I'm back here in TFS portal. I'm in the backlog of the project we've been working on in these particular videos. And now I wanna actually define the sprints and sprint dates. Now you'll notice on the left side, I already have some sprints already set up in the system, but we're gonna go in and show you how you would go about setting up these sprints and setting dates around those sprints. So in the gear up here, right in the middle of the screen, we're gonna click on that. And it takes us over to the, you see the work tab here. If it's not selected, go ahead and select that work tab. And you can see in here, we have the iterations. This is where we set our sprints. Sprints, same things as iterations. We just call them sprints and scrum. And we can actually go down here and you can see we have a number of sprints created for this particular project. So we have six sprints. 
And in we have dates around those particular six sprints. Now I'm going to go and select the Mercury Health and I'm going to add a new child, basically create a new sprint. So we're going to call this one Sprint 7 and set the dates. So we're going to set the start date. And if you notice, the start date is going to pick up uh, from the last date that was in Sprint 6. So if you notice there in Sprint 6, we were on 828. Sprint 7 says, oh, okay, well, I saw you finished on 828 there. We're going to give you a date of 829. Oh, and by the way, we'll pre-populate your end date because I already know how many weeks you're you're working in your particular sprints here. So that saves us a lot of time. So we just in, in try to figure it all out. Save and close it. Now I have a new sprint set up. So again, it's pretty straightforward. You just go through the list, creating your sprints, setting your dates. I think the biggest thing to come up with is actually being able to understand your sprint schedule. How many weeks are we going to have in our sprint? Normally, most folks go from two to three weeks, and that's kind of where I like to fall. No more than three weeks, no less than two. Uh, again, that's ideal. But again, people do work in four-week sprints if they choose to. I think that's a little too long. I really am comfortable working in the two to three week sprint you know, ratio there, uh, depending on you know, what your project is and how long the project is. If we have a relatively short project, 90 day project, I'm gonna do two week sprints. If I have a six month or one year project, I might do three week sprints. So it just all depends. Okay, now that we showed you how to set up a sprint and sprint dates, let's go and add some people to the project so that we can actually then set their capacity and start to work in the sprint. So in order to do so, what I'm gonna do is go back up to the gear in the middle of the screen up here, and I'm going to just hover over it and go to the collection settings option. Now again, you're gonna to have to have higher rated permissions here. You're not gonna have your average dev permissions going into collection settings. To create teams, you're gonna need some, some collection administrator type permissions in order to work with it. So you, you make sure that you know we, you get with the right person or you people to set up the, the teams. Because it's once you set them up, you don't have to go back and reset them up. And again, adding users to the teams, that can happen from a project administrator on a TFS project. So you won't need the collection level person. So now that I'm in the collection settings, I'm going to go here and show you a list down the middle of the screen of all the projects that are in this particular uh, collection. And we're in the default collection. Now I can go in here and I can click on the Mercury Health project. And it takes me into the teams for that particular project. Now, when we create projects in TFS, it automatically creates a team with the project's name. So mine is Mercury Health Team. Again, my other one is the Pack Demo Team for my Pack Demo project. So uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new team here, if you'd like. It's pretty straightforward. You just call, we're going to call this Team Packed and give it a description if you'd like. And then what permissions are the folks in this particular team? Because it's almost like a group. So the folks that get put onto this team, what permissions are they gonna have for in the system? So what I have is contributors by default, but you can see maybe we're creating a build team and they're just gonna have build permissions. Or maybe we're creating just a reader's team, like somebody that can come in and view the system like a stakeholder. But you can give them a, a specific team. Or maybe we're working with a group of administrators on the project, and so we're going to put them in their own team. So again, it all depends on how you want to set up your project. In this case, I'm going to have contributors be the default for this particular team. And do I want to create an area path with the team name? Area paths we didn't really talk much about yet. Um, we will talk about them a little later, but they are the way in which to clarify or classify the work items that you're working in. So like a path to certain things. So for example, we'd have the Mercury Health area path, and then in there we'd have Mercury Health Sprint 1, and then Sprint 2, and Sprint 3. And, and you get these paths in there, and it kind of divvies up the work and classifies the work into particular areas. You could have multiple areas. So by default, you get one with a team, um, but we can also have other ones. So we're going to talk about that later, and not in this video, but we will talk about it more in the courses that we go through in this particular series. So I'm going to create the team here. And it should take a second to do it, and it shouldn't take too long. 
And then once we have created the team, then we can actually go into and, and there it's created. Just going a little slow. Uh, once we have that done, we can actually go in and add, add the users to the particular team. And I'll show you a team that's already have users in it. Again, and then what you do is you now have those users work with the system that way. And you can set capacities and things like that. Up, oh, it aired out. Let's refresh it. And it did create the team. Okay, so that was a little strange, but we're good. So you can see we're in the team pack. We have an administrator in here. We can add more members. So by typing, you can get people to start showing up. So if I go Brian, uh, we can get Brian to show up. Uh, no, let's see if we can find anybody else. That's okay. We'll just add Brian. And we'll get him added to the project in the packed team packed group. Let's refresh. Brian is there. Great. Okay. So this is how you go about creating a team and adding users to that particular team. A project can have multiple teams. There's not just one. So I have two in my particular project. So if we go back to up here and I go back to the collection project settings, go to the project settings this time, you can see I have my two teams here and it shows you the number of members in each team shows you which one is the default team. So I'm going to click on the Mercury Health team and go in here and you can see we have a few different people in the particular team already. So now that we've set sprints and now that we in dates and now that we've added users to the system, it's time for us to actually go and add capacity to the system. So how we do that is we go back to the work tab, go back to our backlog and we'll start working in sprints. So we're currently in sprint two. So usually you set capacity on the sprint that you're currently going into, maybe one ahead, but usually on the sprint you're currently going into. So let's say we're starting sprint two. I would click on sprint two. And then up here, you'll notice in the sprints, which is unlike the backlog items, is we have this capacity option. So if I click on capacity, this is going to list out the people on my particular team that I'm working with. And so I can actually go in here and, and decide what they're working on. So you can see here, Denise is working on design, Clemry's working on requirements, Brian's working on deployment, and the administrator's working on a little bit of both. And again, people can work on multiple activities. But now we have to set their capacity. So I'm going to say for this one, he's going to work on it because three hours in a day and then there's maybe another three hours on the development part of it. And then Brian on his deployment, he's going to he's going to focus most of his time. So we're going to give him six hours. And Clemry, we're going to give him four hours. And Denise on the design, she's only part time with us. So we're going to give her three hours. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to set up some days off. Brian, for example, is going to take a day off. We're going to set him up to take off June 16th. And so June 16th, say OK. And now we have a day off. So you can see in Brian's hours readjust on the board over here on our to show whether or not so you can see Brian's hours are down to 36 now uh, where they were uh, originally. So he's got that day off and then of course we can have team days off. So maybe the team is going to be off on like team outing or a holiday or, or whatever. We can again add those in too. So that's how you go about it. Then you save it. And now we've basically set our capacity for our particular project. Now we can go back to our sprint, go back to our backlog, and we can start actually working in our particular sprint now. We can start bringing work into it and, and working on the sprint. So with that, let's go back and wrap up. Okay, so let's wrap up this particular video. In this video, we talked about defining and setting sprint dates and sprints. We talked about creating a team, a TFS team that is, and how you're adding users to that particular team. And we talked about setting the capacity for the users in your particular sprint that you'll be working in.